How's everybody doing? We get started in a little bit. Hey, Chris, how are you? Good morning or afternoon, whatever time it is now. <laughs> Good afternoon. No. Losing track of time, days. I don't know what, what uh, time frame I'm even in anymore. As long as we're not going to use uh, our, our mind. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to start setting up a sundial or something. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Good. Yeah, I'm just waiting for people to trickle in. We'll probably start in like five minutes. Yep, yep. Just wanted to be on time, ready when you are. Awesome. Lots of familiar names I see. Hope everybody's doing well. Yeah. I know Elise is supposed to be on here too. I think she'll she'll drop in. Yeah, so her and you is running it. Yeah. There she is. She's here. Hey, Elise. <clears throat> All right, yeah, we're getting a <clears throat> we're getting a good crowd. Start in like a start in a few minutes. You working out of the car today? I am actually. Um, had to take uh, my ex for an MRI. You mentioned doctor. Everybody goes, "Oh no, no, no." no. no. She needed a lift for an MRI, so I am mobile at the moment. Awesome. Um, yeah, one more minute. See, it's uh, getting a bunch of people. Uh, we can, I mean, Scott, if you want to start. Yeah, All right. got, a, got a good crowd. All right, so greetings everybody. Scott Leaf, Atlantic Home Loans. Uh, good to kind of see most of you. I hope everybody's well. All right, so a lot of stuff going on, a lot of questions, a lot of changes. Um, what I've learned in the last two weeks is anything I tell somebody, good chance a couple hours later, that information is, uh, has changed drastically. So I'll give you the latest and greatest of what's going on in the mortgage world um, that'll be helpful to you guys. At the moment, first and foremost, FHA is pretty much non-existent at the moment. Um, the reason being is FHA is very high risk. You've got your most uh, or your highest default rates there. And therefore the secondary market doesn't want to take it. So ah, FHA runs. At the uh, speakers. What was that? What's that, Mark? Mar Mar All right. <laughs> All, right, All right. So um, F FHA loans um, are extremely high priced. They're difficult to do. You've um, so right now, if you've got an FHA buyer, uh, certainly speak with us about it. Uh, if you're working with a different lender, make sure uh, you get things updated. I'm going through the list and calling my FHA buyers one-on-one -on -one and the realtors. Basically, those are on hold till 
further notice because they're, they're just cost prohibitive to do. I mean, you're talking like five plus points right now, right? So that's kind of crazy. And again, that's pulling things off the table in terms of um, uh, in terms of uh, like renovation loans as well. Uh, the, the restrictions on those are getting much more difficult. Appraisals are a hot topic. Um, so first and foremost, uh, we're, we're trying to get an appraisal waiver, meaning find out if there's no appraisal and needed as soon as something comes into us. And we find that out when we run through the Fannie and Freddie automated underwrites. Um, but if an appraisal is required more times, it, uh, it will be than won't be. And say there's an extenuating circumstance uh, that somebody can't have somebody in the house, somebody is sick, somebody doesn't know what's going on. Um, at that point, uh, it goes back to the appraisal management company and the lender to see if they can get around it uh, for a desktop or a drive-by. Um, you're not gonna be able to put in for a desktop or a drive-by right out of the gate. That's gotta go through the, the process to see if that is eligible. So those are some of the quickest things that are impacting you guys, as well as um, loan pricing is extremely insanely volatile. Um, what, what happens in the morning and happens in the afternoon can be significantly different on the same loan. So what seems to be going on this week, for example, is when the feds are backing the mortgage-backed securities, the rates have been better in the morning from when the markets open about 10.30 till about lunchtime. Today wasn't a great day for rate pricing. And, uh, you know, so then um, it is what it is. You're not going to get an opportunity to lock. So your buyer should be ready to lock right away to take advantage of that. High balance loans and jumbo loans, those are loans over $510,400 they're gonna have very difficult and erratic pricing as well. So um, those are some of the latest and greatest things going on. Uh, purchases and rate and term refis are gonna get the best opportunity, by the way. With that, uh, any questions from anybody? Questions for Scott? I do. <clears throat> Karen, you have a question? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, hi, everyone. I have a quick question. I mean, I just joined the the, web, the uh, seminar, but I wanted to know, I have a client, I have a, a, a sale that one of the spouses just got laid off and they had um, pre-approval. They did the inspection and everything. They were, you know, under contract and they had a pre-approval from Bank of America and I spoke with Bank of America and they say, Oh no, we cannot approve this because he just got laid off. Is there Great any- Great point to bring up, Karen. Hmm? So what, what's going on now is a lot of people are losing their jobs. A lot of people are being laid off. I'll bet temporary is the intention, but bottom line is if they are not working, that's gonna be a problem. Unemployment cannot be used as a, um, as a form of income because that's temporary. That's a very short-term fix. So um, what lenders are doing now is double checking employment on numerous levels right up through the, the closing day to make sure that they're uh, reasonably gonna keep their job. Uh, if, uh, if they're not gonna have a reduction in hours, folks in our industry who are all commissioned are, are really having a tough time as well. Um, I do have a client who um, was laid off. She went on um, unemployment, but the loan could still be carried with her husband's income alone. So they're kind of lucky in that regard. You will see um, situations where people are no longer employed, all that temporary, not going to be able to close. Thank you. Yeah, that is a great thing to speak to your buyers. When somebody refers me a purchase right now, one of the first questions I'm asking them is uh, their job status. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Some questions in chat. Um, Scott, I have a question. It's facile. So uh, in my understanding, though, is like you can put multiple people on a loan, correct? Like, so could she temporarily get some other people to co-sign the loan to get it approved and then maybe refi it later out? out yeah, of their that, 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 that's a great point, Faisal. You, you certainly can do that. Um, it's going to be just keep checking with your lenders on the rules of non-occupant co-borrowers. Uh, FHAs are blowing those out of the water right now. But as I mentioned initially, FHA is kind of off the table for everybody for the immediate future. Um, and, uh, but yeah, that's a great point. You could bring somebody on the loan to make sure it's can carry. That is an option, conventional loans. Yeah, so uh, you could put up to like what, five people, correct on a loan or is it less than that? Yeah, no, I mean, look, the, 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 you can put as many people as you need to. I've done loans with, with a, a small army on the, on the loans before. 
long as they're all six feet apart. Um, sorry, it was my attempt at humor for the day. Got it. Um, oh. But you can put you can put multiple people on the loan, long as they all qualify. That should work. Okay. Uh, Crystal asks. Let me see. How do you answer the seller who got terminated or who the, the contract terminated due to the buyer got declined for the mortgage loan? Um, how should the seller do to accept the next offer? Um, well, if the contract got terminated, Crystal, because somebody didn't qualify, then, you know, yeah, they're certainly open to, to look. I would certainly, if I was listing a house, uh, one of you guys with the listing, I would ask, hey, uh, you know, to, to my um, buyer's agents, you know, make sure everybody's employed moving forward. And if you, for example, Karen's point, well, they got laid off and it's temporary. Unfortunately, no, we know lenders will not approve somebody who's not currently employed. Um, what happens if the FHA loan was already in process? If the FHA loan was already in process and locked, you're good to go. Great point. So it's grandfathered. These are new FHA loans I would be referring to. Anything else that can help you guys with? And I believe Scott is joining us later for Ask Al Anything. So yep. we'll see you back here in like 45 minutes. Yeah, I'm going to recap a lot of that information. If you guys have anything uh, that you want to bring me offline, please reach out. Happy to help. Thanks so much, Scott. All right, guys. Thanks, Scott. Oh, my pleasure. Take care. Be, Be safe, safe, everybody. Cool. All right. Um, I'm off mute. Okay, cool. Yeah, so all right. Um, basically, what this class was going to go over um, is how you can take advantage of Zoom and YouTube now. So, you know, obviously we're all working in a virtual um, kind of environment right now. And Zoom has become like one of the kind of like forefronters of this whole, um, you know, video conferencing, video meetings um, solutions. So I wanted to go over and at least we're gonna go over how you can um, essentially kind of take advantage of this. Um, and I know we're going to also do some stuff with YouTube because I know we've been getting a lot of questions around YouTube as well. Um, and especially when you're on the go, you can upload videos right from your phone. So I'll, I'll be sharing my screen <clears throat> with my, uh, my phone screen as well. And you'll be able to see how I do that. And I want to jump in really quick before you get started, Chris. Um, what Chris and I are doing right now is showing you guys like the technical, like how you actually go and set this up. We're not really showing what you say to your clients or how you actually hold the meeting. We're just yeah. showing you guys how to set it up and how to upload videos from your phone, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. For those of you who want to see how agents are actually hosting those meetings, uh, today at four o'clock, KW Connect has how to hold virtual appointments and consultations. And that's some of the map, MAPS coaches are sharing like strategies. So I would watch this and then check out that four o'clock class um, or watch it later on Connect. I think that'll be helpful for you guys. So thanks. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right, let me get my screen shared here. And then I already had pulled, pulled up some stuff for Zoom. So I'll be kind of like going between the actual Zoom app on my computer and the website. So I'm gonna start with the website first because that's basically where you're gonna be led to. So if we go to zoom.us, that's gonna be the URL that you can get into Zoom with. And basically from here, what you'd wanna do is create a, an account. So you can create an account, it's free. They do have some paid options available and that would be more so useful if you plan hosting you know, bigger conferences because um, you do have a 40 minute limit with a free account. But if you're only hosting it with one person or two people, um, the room would essentially be open until you end the meeting. So I wanna just go through my account settings and walk you through how you can do some of the kind of like the basics, like setting up the meetings. Um, I also will suggest some of the settings that you can keep on. So if I go to my account, the first thing you're going to see when you go into your account settings is your profile. So one of the things you'll also notice here that I have is something called a personal meeting ID. So the room that you're actually sitting in right now is actually a personal meeting ID, and that's a permanent, kind of like a unique URL to you. And the, the benefit of that is that you can actually use this um, just for setting up meetings and you can always have that one link available so you don't have to create multiple links. Um, however, when scheduling meetings, you could um, decide whether or not you wanna have a unique link every time, or if you wanna use your personal meeting URL. 
Um, just to go through some of the additional settings down here in the profile, this is just going to be just your basic profile settings uh, meetings. Now, under meetings, this is where you're going to actually set up the meetings for, you know, any sort of client interaction or um, agent interactions. The way that you would do that is if you go where it says schedule a new meeting. You'll see here the first screen that it brings up is um, what the topic is going to be. And this would be typically something I would name maybe the person that I'm meeting with. I can say like meeting with, um, and you can see like I've used it before, meeting with Elise, let's say. And then I could put a description in there if I wanted, just to kind of maybe refresh my memory about what we're going to be going over during the actual meeting. Um, this is where you would set up the date and time. So you can see when, what the duration will be, um, the time zone that it's going to be in. And then you can also see I can make it a reoccurring meeting if I'm going to be meeting with this person over the course of a week or so. Um, <clears throat> There's a question in chat, Lori, can we rename our URL? You actually can, but you have to pay. So it's called, it's like a vanity URL. Mm -hmm. So I believe, I, I don't think it's too expensive. Maybe, I don't know the price off the top of my head. I can look really quick. Um, I think it might be like $10. They might charge you monthly though. And that's from Zoom directly? It's from Zoom directly. And it's at, I think it's in your account management. Okay, I'll have a look at that when I get into okay. that section. Um, okay, so then with the meeting room settings, it's just kind of, you know, I can select whether or not I wanna have it as a registration link. Um, whether or not I want to generate a unique URL every time or I use my personal meeting ID. I personally like to use my permanent or meeting ID just because I don't have to generate a new URL every time, but it's totally up to you how you do it. Now, what you can also do is um, just kind of automate some settings here, like um, whether or not the host and participant video is turned on automatically. Um, I, whether or not you need a password to get into the actual room. Um, now for this, this I would probably suggest just because, um, you know, you might not want to have somebody else being able to get into that room later on. Um, so you can have a password set to it so nobody else can get into it besides the person you're meeting with. Um, now, as far as audio, you do have a, a couple different options there and, um, You'll notice if you've been on these calls before, you would see some, some agents are using this um, from their phones, some from their computers or tablets. So it's very flexible on how you can actually get into a Zoom meeting. So you could give the ability to allow them to have multiple options for audio. I mean, this setting is just defaulted to both. I would keep it that way. Um, now with media, meeting options, this is totally on your discretion. So I usually like to enable join before host. That way the person can kind of hang out in there before I get in, just in case. Um, you could also have people muted on entry. This is more useful for, um, you know, when you're having a larger group of people um, flowing in. I usually keep this turned off as well, enable waiting room. I don't think you need to really worry about that one too much. Um, authenticated users, it gets to kind of more advanced stuff and then you can also have the re, the um, meeting recorded automatically. So just to elaborate on that a little bit, like the enable waiting room, if you have a waiting room enabled, they don't actually get to join the meeting until you start it. Like I, I know that he said, um, join before host, it allows them to get in there. I usually find that's a lot easier. The other thing with the waiting room, um, not only can they not join, but as you start the meeting, you have to, accept their entry. So every right. time someone wants to join, a little bu a button comes up in the bottom and you have to approve them. So if you're not super savvy with Zoom, I would not use the waiting room because it just, even for me, it's like, you know, confusing because you have to s constantly stop what you're doing and let yeah. them in. Especially if you're sharing your screen like I am, I can't always get into the participant list. So right. it makes it a little bit easier if you just allow people to join in. Um, and then you can also designate alternative hosts. So this would be, again, if you're having another person in there, maybe moderating with you, um, you can email invite them as well. 
once you hit save, it's going to generate a, um, a nice little email template or kind of like a copy that you can then copy and paste into an email or text. Um, and then your meeting is essentially set. Let me, let me just do one. We'll do a sample one here. So let's just do this. So this one would be set for today. Um, let's say we're going to do it at four. And I'm going to put a password on there as well. And let's just say we're going to do Keller123. And again, you don't have to have the password. I just, I just um, recommended it as like a security thing. And then if I hit save, this is going to generate the calendar invites, which is pretty awesome. And then I have a join URL here as well. And you'll see it's like this nice little um, kind of like email template that I can just copy and paste directly into an email. And that has everything from the links, the password, meeting ID, um, phone numbers to call in if I'm going to be joining from my phone audio. And then, um, yeah, I mean, this is good to go. Uh, was there anything? If you have it hooked up to your Google Calendar, uh, you can actually just invite them to the event on the calendar as well, right. which I find a little bit easier. And yeah. I think you guys might be more familiar with. So you would, hi, hi guys. Uh, hi. Oh, yeah. Um, so you would just add the phone numbers of your clients to that particular virtual meeting that you're going to do with them. No, you're going to share that link with them. You're not going to add their phone numbers. You're going to copy that invitation and either text or email that to them. They oh, have to okay. click on the link to join. All right. So you don't put their phone numbers in there. No, no. no. Okay. Yeah, so think of it this way, this, this URL is actually unique. And whoever I share this to would have access to get into that room. So like, because I have a password on it, only the people who know like about that um, particular invitation link would be able to get in. So you would just send it to their email then? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Chris, when you connect to the calendar uh, on there, do you need to go back to your, um, profile to have that function added in? Um, It'll you... base it off of whatever Gmail account is logged in on that browser at the time. Mm. So you don't so, need to click on there to say connect to calendar and contact service that area. So like if I did add to Google Calendar, what's going to happen is it's going to redirect me to my defaulted profile. Like I can go into uh, my KW one, but it's always going to default to my, my other mm -hmm. one. But if I hit allow, Okay. You're going to see here what it does is it brings me to my Google Calendar. And um, once this loads, it should pop up an invitation. Yeah, it's seeing like, can I not find requested email event? If you, usually if you refresh, it works. Yeah, let me see. Guys, would that also work on um, an iCalendar or only for Google? Uh, is iCalendar an option in Zoom? Um, I believe I saw one. Or, I mean, you could export it to yeah. Google Calendar, and then that could add it into your iCal as well. You're gonna so how do you, so if you wanna schedule an open house, for example, on Zoom, just for the, the question, um, can you copy it and paste it in the MLS? Oh no. I don't think that? that they let you put the Zoom link on the MLS. I was kind of trying to find that out. Uh, you can include that link. So basically where it says there, the join URL, you, you can copy and paste that link wherever, Facebook, email, MLS, that link will take them to your open house. I was yes. thinking, hey, could you, I, don't, I don't know if it's allowed. I haven't really looked into it myself, but I would assume you can probably put it into the, um, the, uh, the MLS copy of the description. Right. Yeah, because... It's like they asking us to do Zoom open houses, but yet um, the open house area says one to four, but one to four what? Yeah, it, that know. totally makes sense. So, someone did include it in their agent remarks. So, okay, yeah, awesome. okay, good, good okay. to know. Thanks. And if you're doing a Zoom open house, don't do four hours. Do one hour. Of it's course, like, I'm, I'm just saying. saying yeah, like, no, I'm not even gonna do one hour. I'm gonna do half, half, whatever. But my question is like, is 
I, I'm going to ask the MLS actually if it's possible to even do it in the remarks, not agent remarks, because on Zillow, they don't see the agent remarks. They only see the remarks. So it's not. No, Zillow is going to delete it. Like Zillow, I don't think is going to allow it. I tried putting it in the URL field in Zillow and it didn't go through and they do delete links um, out of your description. So of course I don't know. they do. I don't know about Zillow yet, but I know on the MLSs it works. Uh, Fossil, to answer your question, no, there's no way to directly share it. You're just going to copy and paste that link onto Facebook or Instagram, wherever you're promoting it. Right. Um, and then they'll, they'll be directed to that meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, How about putting it in the virtual tour field in the KWS? It doesn't. No, that that's not that. going to load a video. You can put it in yeah. the description, but not in the virtual tour. Yeah, I would be careful with that. Yeah, the MLS is going to reject it if you put it in public remarks. Yeah, so it's mostly, it's not really <laughs> beneficial to distributing to the public if it's in your, if it's not in your description. So, you know, if you're marketing your open house, I would say that it's really huge to be promoting it on social media. Um, you could put contact me, text me, for open house link in the description. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, so as far as the meeting setup, it's very, it's very straightforward. So you saw here, I was able to set up a meeting rather quickly. I just went through some of the, um, you know, just some of the options to make sure everything looked okay. And then I, you know, I essentially created the meeting. Um, you probably noticed that there is some live streaming options. Once I get into the actual application section, I'll show you how that works. But um, just some of the additional functionality, we're not gonna really go into webinars. I don't think that really applies to us right now. But things like recordings, you know, if you planned on recording things, they do appear here. So this is where all my um, previous recordings will live. And then what's cool about this is that I can actually share the link out because there's a link or I can download this video. And you can also see there's also additional um, things I can do here, like create a registration or password protect this. So anytime that I'm streaming and I have this saved, you can either go by cloud recordings, which I highly recommend, although you do only have one gig of storage, but if you're not gonna be recording too much, it's not like, it's not too big a deal. You can also do local recordings, which will record it directly to your computer as a video file. So you have two options there, how that works. Um, and then under settings here, this is just kind of going down a list of different settings for your meetings. Um, and you can see here some of the ones that I have checked off, join before host, using my personal meeting ID um, when I'm scheduling meetings. Um, Let's show them uh, like in the meeting. Can we show them how you mute and manage participants? Yeah. Okay, so let's minimize this for a second. So you're in a meeting. Let me just stop sharing my screen as well. Oh, actually I can't. <laughs> so you're in a meeting. You're gonna have a bunch of options as a host available that your other participants won't. So I'm just gonna open up my participant list here. We can't see uh, Zoom at all. Oh, you can't see my, my Either, options It doesn't here. capture Zoom. No, I can't see the app. It's not going to capture anything. Yeah, new options. Huh. You could, you could do, you said you could do QuickTime. What did you say you could do? Yeah, let me see if I can, um, let me see if I can open that up and if that works. And then let me know if you can see it. I like the visual though. That's a nice place. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where that is, but it's pretty nice. <laughs> so just a second here, and do a screen share. Yeah, we would, and we would just be a lot easier for us to show you guys how to do this. But unfortunately, in a Zoom call, it doesn't allow us to show you any of the Zoom tools. So we're trying to find a way that we can record it backwards to show you. Yeah. Are you talking about the screen sharing again? Well, yeah. he's sharing his screen and you can see everything on his screen, but you can't see anything that has to do with the Zoom. Like you can't see the desk app, you can't see the participants, you can't see what we see when we're in a meeting. 
you see on the on the side. Can everybody see my see. screen now? I see your screen and I see you. No, no, no. You, but you can you see? No, I don't see the zoom at all. It's just yeah. the picture of the mountain. Huh. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, because I thought you would be able to see my top bar as well. No. Oh. Um, you see okay. the top bar. Let me see if I could. You could see the top bar, but that's his yeah. Mac. Like, yeah. That's his start bar. Can you try on the uh, share screen function? Maybe the setting can change something about it. I mean, we've we have. I I haven't found. Well, it way. happened yesterday, and you just stuck with the sharing. <laughs> like quit the sharing. No, the sharing works. We can't show you Zoom. Right. I'm trying to see if I could. I mean, I could. Okay. How are you doing the Facebook Live? Uh, so yeah, we can show you how to do that as soon as we figure out how to share. Yeah, because right now it's, I thought it would show my bar up here. That's mm -hmm. kind of annoying. Okay. Um, but I do have an instruction manual here that I can kind of just go over if you can see it. So I'm just going to scroll down this list and I'll figure out how to do this for next time because I thought it would still show my bar on the top. Um, but basically here, if you can see my screen right now, once you actually start a room, so you launch a room and you can either do that from the browser or once you download the software, can you see this screen at least? Yeah, we can see it. So through the actual software, I can log in and then I have the ability to go into a meeting because I can join a meeting. Um, I can create a meeting. You can also share your screen from here. And then I can also look at my schedule. So once I start scheduling out events, um, you can see here, I also have in my calendar one for coming up soon. Um, I also have a list of meetings that, you know, I would have had recorded upcoming. So that you can manage from the actual Zoom app because that has to be downloaded either way. Um, and if you're working on a Mac, the one thing I do actually like about the Mac one is that on the top here, there's a little camera. And you can see here all the options I have available within the actual room as a host from here. So you see here, I can mute audio, I can mute all, I can unmute all. I can also see who the participants are. Um, I can set up a new screen share. Um, what's happening in the chat, which right now we have three messages. I can also stop recording. So from here, you can actually access a lot of the different um, Zoom functionality as well. But um, just to go back into my document here, let's just say we weren't working on a Mac because I'm not sure on Windows if it's the same functionality. So let's say we're working from the browser and we open up our Zoom room. You can see here the options that are gonna pop up first. It's gonna, how are you gonna join with your audio? So joining with regular audio, computer audio, if you're gonna be using a microphone, you can also do that as well. Now, um, you can manage room controls in the middle of the screen. So when I mentioned here, this was the bar I was trying to show you guys. So you can see here, you'll all have a bar. And when you're a host, you'll actually have a few other options. So when you manage participants, if I click that, this box is going to open up here. And then I would have the ability to mute. I can unmute. Um, and then there's other options available here, um, whether or not you want to mute on entry, um, and there's a few other ones in there. Let me see if I can pull up the list. Um, let me see my participant list here. Yeah, you can play like a like an entrance. It's like a little bell noise, and you can also lock out the meeting if you need to. Now, as I scroll down here, I mentioned some of the participant options. So obviously the muting and unmuting is a, um, one of the ones you'll have access to right away because those are gonna appear right here. And then if you hit the more button, that's where you'll have the access to some of the other additional functions. Now, as far as setting up a live stream, when you're a host, you'll have a little button on the 
uh, right hand bottom corner that says more. Once you hit that button, there's gonna be options available to post to Facebook Live, um, Live Workplace, which I haven't actually played around with yet. And then you can also post a live stream to YouTube. So if you prefer to use YouTube, you can also do that. Um, I believe on my toolbar here, I can also do that. Um, uh, someone asks, is the manual available when we open a free account? No, Chris, this is a manual that Chris made. Uh, he has it available. Thank you. For yeah, I think that, Crystal. Yeah. Oh, uh, I can also post it in the chat as well. If anybody wants access to that. Um, so as I move down here, uh, basically, once you set up a live stream for Facebook, it's going to ask you where you want it to run to. So I just did the example as a group. So if I'm running it into a group, that's what's going to show up. And then I just choose the group. I can name it because you have to put some sort of name in here or else it's not going to let you run the live stream. So once you post that live stream, you hit go live and then it's gonna redirect you back to Facebook, like the timeline, and you can just kind of close out of it because then it'll be good to go. Um, so sharing your screen. I mentioned that bar in the middle. So underneath the your video screen here, there's gonna be a button, a green button, and it's only a green button on the screen. It says share. So let's say you wanna share your screen to a client. Uh, maybe you're reviewing some sort of document on your computer or you wanna show them something on your computer or even on your phone. If you're working on an iPhone um, and you have a Mac, again, I'm not sure how it, with Windows. Um, Windows, you can also do with a USB, but if you're using a Mac, you can do AirPlay and you can actually mirror your screen to Zoom, which I'm gonna do for um, the YouTube demo. Um, so clicking share is going to give you the option to choose which type of screen you want to share. You can do your desktop, you can do a whiteboard, which will allow you to do like a, um, like a drawing board. And then I mentioned the iPad and uh, iPhone um, screen sharing as well. Um, and that was the sharing options. I think that was all I had in the manual. Was there any questions? In yeah, would you be able to show us uh, the whiteboard? Yeah. Yeah, that looks kind of fun and interesting to do. So you can grab that pen and just, or do you have to type and then it writes for you? Can you see my whiteboard? Yeah. Yes. So I can basically like draw out stuff. You know, we can play charades right now if you want. That's cool. <laughs> I know, can you type too? Will it type on yeah, there? Yeah, it does have type. Okay. All right, because I'm using this at Montclair State. It's a different configuration. The whole university is on um, Canvas. So I just press the big blue button and boom, my whole class comes up. So it's oh, very cool. easy for me, yeah. So this is a whole different configuration that I'm trying to learn, you know? Right. Yeah. So That's can awesome. participants draw on that board? No. Okay. Well uh not that i know of what was the question can participants draw so if you play pictionary you know you <laughs> person no but chris. i can link you there's a game actually i was playing yesterday with uh chris can you last sorry, night with my it. friends oh Thank please you. elise thank you there are sorry, actually a lot of it. um the fun games that you can you play can help, me help go back to how you get that whiteboard on you have to click the share button um I think my screen just went away, but if I click the share button in the middle, you have the ability to choose whether or not it's a desktop share, whiteboard, um, iPhone. Okay. So like if I share my screen, I'm just back to here, but then I can go and hit share again and I can click whiteboard and it brings me to the whiteboard. Okay. So basically the, the green button in the middle that says new share, um, that's what allows you to actually share your screen and or whiteboard. Okay. Did you did you also say um, about the muting? Um, you mean you can unmute people yourself? Yeah. Or... As, as a host, as a host, you have some additional functions. So, like, if I'm in a room um, and I'm trying to just uh, right, hold on, just kind of moderate the volume levels, or if I'm trying to make sure I don't have any feedback on my mic. 
I can mute people in the room. Wow. Okay. And you can unmute them, you're saying, right? Correct. You can unmute. And to clarify, because I've had some people asking, you cannot force turn on someone's video. Yeah. So if you're in a Zoom call and you don't have your video on, no one can turn that on. So you don't have to feel like someone can just. Yeah, that would be a little weird. Camera on. <laughs> Thank goodness. That would but be But you can turn on, you can unmute them. Um, yeah. Just to be aware. If you do, if you do on Zoom, let's say virtual open houses, and you want to show video, uh, you go basically through the same routine, or we can, or we have different options to share to share the video of what you, what you create for the, for if the. If you're virtual. doing a virtual open house in the sense where you've created a tour, a video walkthrough of the home, then I wouldn't even necessarily think that you need the Zoom for that. I would share that via email or Facebook directly. Yeah. I would create some type of post and say, if you're interested in seeing the virtual walkthrough, please reach out and contact me. And then when that person calls or emails or texts you, then you send them the link to the video. Um, in this case, what we're trying to do is have more of an interactive situation. So like if I was on my phone right now and I wanted to walk you guys through this house, I could. Um, and you don't necessarily in that sense need to be doing a whole lot with managing chat and stuff. Do we have, can we, did you record the prior session? Yes. Uh, any other questions? What, what do you guys want to know? We wanted to also, I wanted Chris to show you guys how easy it is to upload videos from your phone to YouTube, because that is a great way to be sharing content right now. Um, and it is, most of us have like pretty new, newer phones. And I would say if your phone is, you have a phone that is less than four years old, then you can be creating pretty decent videos right on your phone and uploading them right to YouTube straight from your phone. Um, and that's great stuff that you can be sharing Facebook, you can be sharing um, with your contacts. Can everybody see my phone screen? Yep. Cool. Um, so what I was going to do, so I just did like a quick video before while Scott was speaking. And let's say like hypothetically, um, you know, <laughs> we, we did a, you know, we just did like a virtual walkthrough and we want to post that to my we wanna post that to my um, YouTube channel. So you can do that easily on the go now, it's awesome. If I go into my YouTube app, I'm just gonna go ahead and go to YouTube. I have quite a few apps, so just bear with me. So I'm on my YouTube section here and I think my connection just dropped out, give me a sec. Sorry about that. Can you see my screen again? Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, so I'm back on my YouTube. I'm just going to change it over to the BCP channel, or I'll just do my KW one. It's all good. So I'm on YouTube. Oh, what the? Sorry, I don't know what's going on here. So I'm on, on, my, on my YouTube again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's going to, I don't know why it's doing this. Give me a second. Sorry. It's very frustrating. Okay, let's try this again. On YouTube. So, uh, oh, sorry. Um, well, how can we, I don't think we can, they can see our phones. I'm going to see if I can uh, just do it with USB. One sec. I was literally doing this before for like an hour and it wasn't doing that. Um, of course, if, while he's figuring that out, if you guys have questions, uh, wasn't sure if it was a toggle or both streams work concurrently. Yeah, they do work at the same time. Like right now I have this on Facebook and I have Facebook on my other monitor. And then I have you guys on this monitor. So it's something to be mindful of if you do go live on Facebook, the people who are in chat or asking questions on that Facebook feed, uh, your Facebook live, you will not be coming up in your Zoom chat. 
So if you only have one screen and you're using Zoom and you put it live on Facebook, please know that you might be missing comments or questions on Facebook. Um, so I recommend maybe having it open on Facebook open on your phone and Zoom on your computer or vice versa. Okay, I'm just gonna be doing. How do you do a virtual background? Um, in the bottom of your screen, you'll see where it says, uh, there's a little arrow next to your video where it has mute or stop video or start video. Uh, that little arrow you can click on, choose virtual background. Can everybody see my screen again? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, cool. So I'm back on my phone and uh, okay, this car's running over some shells, that's cool. But let's say I wanna, um, now I had posted that video and I wanna upload it into my YouTube channel. Okay. So what I can do is if I go up to the top here, there's a little like camera button. Okay. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Um, go here, where's my... <coughs> Let's see. Did they like change this? When <laughs> you hit the little camera, what happens? It says uh, oh. allow access. Okay, cool. So I have this video. So I'm going to take this video and then I'm going to now upload it to YouTube. So this, again, this can be like a virtual tour of the home that I just recorded and I want to just post it into my channel to share. I can go and hit next. And what I can do from here is I can give it a title. I can just say test video. Four point one twenty twenty. And description, I can just put in some of the description of what it's gonna be. So I can say, this is a virtual walkthrough of 123 Main Street in Fort Lee, NJ. Then what you can also do is you can add, whoops, sorry. Left, so this is going to give me access to my location. You can also see I can set what type of um, privacy settings it has. So, so public. Like if this was if this was an open house that you wanted to share and you didn't want to necessarily post it on YouTube, like I want people to have to talk to me in order to get access to this video, yep. I would leave it as unlisted because that means they're only going to be able to see the link or see the video when you send them the link. Public would be anybody can find it on YouTube and private only you can watch it. So you either want to choose public or unlisted. Um, if you want people to be able to go and check out your content on YouTube, then you want to leave it as public. Um, that is something you can change. So you might want to have it unlisted at first and then down the road, put it as public. Um, and just to backtrack a little bit, uh, all you have to do is download the app for YouTube from either the Google or Play Store um, or App Store on your phone download YouTube. And once you're signed in, which generally, if you guys don't, you don't need to make a YouTube account, you can sign in with any Gmail account. So I recommend if you're, this is something that you're using for business, just sign in with whatever Gmail you use for business. Yep. Um, and then from there, all you have to do is hit that little camera. There's a little teeny camera on the main screen. Uh, Chris will go back to that in a minute. And it lets you pull up your, your, gallery. So if you already have that video, you're going to take the video with your phone, open up the YouTube app, hit the camera and choose the video you just recorded. It is super easy. One thing I also, as just like a tip, every KW, every KW email, you have access to a YouTube channel. So you can definitely feel free to use that. If you prefer to use a, a separate email, like Elise said, you can just open up a new, a, another um, Google account and you can use that specifically for just your YouTube stuff. So then the last step would just be uploading it and then that's gonna be added into my, um, my library. So then that video is then live, I can share that out. 
So let me see if I go back. You also know some other functions here as well. There's one that says record and there's also one that says go live. So in addition to be able to um, recording video on demand, you can also do a live stream kind of like you would on Facebook. So if I go into my actual channel, any videos that I would upload are gonna live in here as you can see. So these are just some of my um, tech videos I've done. On the little right hand side here, if you click on that button, this is where you can share it. So there's a little share button. And I can text that, I can copy the link and post it directly to my Facebook or I can tweet it um, or I can send it in an email however you prefer to do it. And you can also watch these videos here too, if you click on it, so then it just gives you a nice little video stream. Uh, any questions around what I just did? So this one is basically, you did your phone with the video and after that you opened the YouTube and you, uh, from there, um, you just link, you add the title where you want, for example, open house or whatever mm -hmm. the content, and then you select uh, how do you want this to be listed or yep. published, yep. correct? Just a quick quick recap of what yep. I, um, mm -hmm. okay. And, name and it, you yeah, don't need to pay it. for any kind of service or anything like that for doing no. that. No. And okay. a lot of times if you guys are trying to include a video on things and you're limited because it'll say enter video URL. It wants that video to be on YouTube. So if you're ever trying to put a video on your website, you're trying to put a video on Facebook, um, it's easier to have that URL from YouTube. And you can easily do that when you're recording videos on your phone um, to share. I'm gonna put that link in the chat because again, at four o'clock today, they're doing the class, which is, Da, 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 uh, virtual appointments and consultations. That's going to be good. Um, and I think that would be really great to watch. I'm definitely going to watch it just to get some ideas. Yeah. So I would, I would also just say, look, if you're having videos sent to you, maybe you had a, um, a professional photographer send you a video file, you can essentially re replicate the same process on your desktop as well. I'm just on youtube.com right now. And for me to upload a video, I can just go to create a video and more. And I can either upload or go live. Now, if I hit upload, all I have to do is just find where the video is. And it's the same exact process. So I drag and drop the file in. Um, it allows me to upload that and I just name it. I can add um, you know, the description for it. Once it's actually uploaded, there is a additional functions in here, but I don't want to dive too deep into YouTube right now because there's a lot of things you can do once you actually upload the video. But if you're on the go and you just want to up, upload something super quick, doing it from your phone is very simple, as you saw. Is there copyright concerns on YouTube? Um, I mean, copyright only becomes an issue when you really have a lot of viewers or you have ads revenue set up on your YouTube channel. Uh, but things like music or, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know what else would be really copyrighted in your pre your own recorded content. You can't upload a video that someone else you made. You drive it every five days or so. Uh, you can't upload a video that somebody else made, but if you filmed a video on your phone, that is your content that you can upload. Yeah, I would say the only thing really to be concerned about, and I've noticed this with Facebook as well, is if you're doing a video and it has any any sort of any sort of sliver of music that's copyrighted, they will flag. Yeah, your be video careful right with be careful with music. They'll mute your video. They won't necessarily take yeah. it down, but they'll mute it. And uh, sometimes they take it down. The other thing is like don't have like alcohol. I know on Facebook, they'll yeah. delete the post or they might delete any type of like even a can of beer or even mention of drinking. Yeah. Um, so just make sure that it's, you know, it's rated G. What's the lowest rating? G. I think it's G. 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 I think G. 
<laughs> I also I also know with I know with NJMLS too, and I'm not sure if it applies anymore. But they used to have um, you weren't able to post branded videos. So if you had a video that had like your information, like a business card mm -hmm. at the end of it, um, you weren't allowed to do that. But I believe now they let they have like a section you can post it in. Can you repeat again how you share your video when it's not public? So if it's not public, um, what I would do is I would have some type of promotion going on my Facebook to say, let me know if you'd like yeah. to see this, the virtual tour, or the virtual walkthrough of this house. And then in order to share the video, you would just copy and pink paste that link to the video, which you can get on your YouTube. So when you go to that YouTube channel, just copy and paste the URL and then send it to them. They can see it, they don't need a password, but they just can't search for it. If they were to type in the address or something, it's not gonna come up. Because I want them to give, you know, in this case where we don't have sign-in sheets, um, how are we capturing, how are we lead capturing on a virtual open house? Uh, I would check out the class that Chris and I did on, or I did, one of us did, on creating a landing page where you could use it as a sign-in sheet. Um, and then I'm capturing leads and any lead that comes in, I'm then gonna send them the link. So I want them to give me something for them to get this video. I'm not just gonna post it on my Facebook page. Um, and that's the benefit of uploading it private on, um, or unlisted on YouTube. So they can call me, they can text me, you know, I'm just going to put a picture of the house on my Facebook and say, want to see the inside, you know, want to see the virtual walkthrough, um, text or call me today. And then once they do, I'll have the link ready and available to send. So we're going to wrap up. Um, if you guys have questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Chris and I are on Facebook all day. Um, we are doing these classes all day. I also have a six o'clock ask us anything. Um, we can come and ask your questions. So we're going to wrap up and get ready for Al. And um, yeah, I hope this was valuable for you guys. Definitely check out that four o'clock. Where can I find the landing page video? Uh, Definitely on YouTube, but I can find it and I'll upload it to YouTube. Or was I, that, did I, say I think I did one. Okay, I know I have so one. Chris is going to put well. it on his YouTube, and yeah. then I have a couple classes that are recorded on here. And then we have all the classes we've done for BCP can be um, are available on our Facebook. Uh, you want the link for Al? This is the link for Al. So I'm going to hop off, but thank cool. you guys. All right, thanks, guys.